Okay. We've gone through some introductory material, warmed up with motion in one spatial dimension with one dimensional kinematics. Uh, we've learned how to combine the different dimensions of space together through vectors. Uh, and now we're ready to go off and explore motion in two and three dimensions. Uh, we'll talk about uh, kinematics in two and three dimensions, uh, a special case of kinematics called projectile motion, which uh, that obtains when you have an acceleration along one spatial dimension, but uniform translation across the other one or two spatial dimensions. So this, basically your coordinates are aligned with your one acceleration and that acceleration keeps a constant direction. The next topic in this chapter is a slight modification of projectile motion. In projectile motion, you have a constant acceleration in a fixed direction, like the acceleration due to gravity pulling everything down. Uh, a slight modification of that is a constant magnitude of acceleration, but with a changing direction. And that is the case of circular motion. For circular motion, I've got a constant acceleration towards the center of a circle. It's always the same strength, but it's changing direction. So some uh, archetypal images for this topic. Projectile motion was my favorite. The trebuchet uh, launching uh, objects into uh, free fall due to gravity and uniform translation in the horizontal direction, giving you projectile motion. And then one of the greatest diagrams in all of physics, going all the way back to Newton's Principia Mathematica, um, Newton's uh, image of uh, a cannon atop a tall mountain and all the possible orbits being conic sections, ellipse, circle, parabola, hyperbola, result from giving that projectile a different initial speed. So a circular orbit is an example of uniform circular motion is where the projectile has just the right speed for Earth's gravity to always fall continually around the Earth at the same rate so that it's always keeping the same elevation above the surface of the Earth same radius from the center of the Earth, and the same speed. It's going at just the right rate to fall completely around the Earth. And you can go uh, on an orbit that's initially faster than that, giving you uh, an ellipse, a parabola, or a hyperbola. And then, of course, you can go on an orbit that is uh, slightly slower than that. You shift, which focus... Uh, is at the center of the Earth, and then you get an ellipse again as long as you don't hit the surface of the Earth. There's not a lot of wiggle room between those. But all projectile motions that we're seeing on Earth, um, you know, unless you're going into orbit, those are all of these cases of actually being a partial uh, trajectory along an ellipse. It's just that the Earth gets in the way, the projectile hits the ground, and so it can't continue on in that ellipse. So what we see is projectile motion when you shoot a free throw or, or have to shot put or any of your favorite sports ball games, kicking a soccer ball. All of those trajectories are a segment of an ellipse. All right, let's try a few questions. Let's see where we're at. So in this first question, not a very good drawing of a roller coaster, but you know, let's have a little uh, imagination. A cart on a roller coaster rolls down the track as shown below. So there's our cart. As a cart rolls beyond the point shown, what happens to its speed and acceleration in the direction of motion? So think about what you think the answer is. Talk it over with your physics friends. And then um, when you're ready, unpause the video and let's see what the answer is. All right, past the motion shown, uh, that point there, 
<clears throat> the speed has to continue to increase because it has an acceleration along the direction of the incline, right? But the slope of the incline is getting more and more shallow. And it is the angle of that slope that's telling you what the acceleration is. If you get to the point where the slope is zero, because the curve is you know, a flat line, there's no acceleration at the point. And the acceleration is going to be greatest where this curve is steepest. So it is still going downhill. So the cart is still speeding up. Speed is increasing. But the slope is becoming more shallow. So the acceleration is decreasing after the point show. All right, let's try another one that is important for thinking about two-dimensional motion. You have a bicyclist, you're riding at a constant speed along a horizontal straight line path. Uh, you throw a ball straight up to a height that's a few meters above your head, ignore air resistance, where is the ball going to land? It's going to be in front of you, behind you, in the opposite hand to the one you threw it, in the same hand you threw the ball where it cannot be determined without knowing the speed of the rider and the maximum height of the ball. So think it through, talk it through, uh, make sure you read all the wording in the question and understand it. And then once you come to an answer, talk it over with your physics friends and then unpause the video and see if you guys agree. All right, the ball is gonna have to land in the very same hand that threw the ball up. We're on a horizontal straight line path and we're ignoring air resistance. So the only force that is acting is gravity. Gravity acts straight down. Uh, that gravity is not gonna make the ball go any faster forward or any slower, so any faster backwards. So whatever horizontal velocity you give the ball when you throw it up in the air, that's preserved. It's sharing the same horizontal velocity as the bike. And it's going to come back and land right in your hand. Uh, and this question is important for uh, building up our understanding of projectile motion, of having an acceleration along one direction, but a constant velocity in the perpendicular direction. So it's a combination of acceleration and uniform translation.